Okay, we heard you already. God, bitch. She is the worst. You know, the new year, you'd think she might have a nicer greeting. Like, happy new year. We're recording now. Cool? And just... Whatever. Whatever. Well, happy new year, Jeannie. Happy new year, Sadie Dean. I think that um, we can bring enough joy and happiness and smiles and cheers <laughs> to override this horrible Zoom lady. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. How many episodes do we start with me complaining about the Zoom lady? All of them. <laughs> and I will go on record on that. Yes. <laughs> So new year, new you. Yeah, um, here we maybe. are. But I like the old you, so the, don't change yeah. too much. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate okay, that. Okay, one question. Do you have a new guitar up there or did you always have five? I actually have two new guitars up there. Yeah, see, I pay attention. Yeah, kind yeah, of. yeah. I'm very excited. Uh, I bought a sitar like electric guitar which is this one right here and then the one this... next to it is a six string bass but it's really like a guitar um it's called a bass six for those who know their instruments and uh it's a lot of fun okay so the sitar mm -hmm. did that come about after the special episode podcast you did with miriam yes yeah, so th i had bought that and I totally forgot about it. <laughs> and then she brought up that she was picking up the sitar again. And I was like, oh, yeah, I actually just bought one, but I hadn't put it out yet. It was still in, in my closet. So now I finally brought it out. So many instruments, you just can't keep track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a problem I like to have. Yeah. I have no instruments in my house, but... I do have my old flute that I played in, I don't know when I started playing it, grade school, middle school, high school, and then I switched over to the bassoon. I do not own a bassoon, but I have my old flute and I'm trying to sell it at the store, <laughs> antique shop, because <laughs> it's pretty much a freaking antique and um, I'm never going to play that thing. You should maybe do like a demo and, and show everyone how great it is before they buy it uh, actually well, don't do that that's gross it it actually doesn't sound that great <laughs> it needs to be all like new pads new like mm. it needs it Need needs love. love that i have no intention of giving it because i have no heart <laughs> that is actually the saddest thing i think i've heard all day <laughs> oh, that I poor flute it, you know wow. it's sad it's sad. you know it reminds me of it's like the brave little toaster but that's your flute or little buddy. There's a brave toaster. You've never, your kids never watched that. You never, you never I, saw that. No, I feel like we are, our ages are just enough different that it's like, I'm the oldest than you, than my kids. And it's like, my kids probably wasn't around with my kids. Like, I, I don't know, like stuff you watched maybe wasn't around my kids. I'm not that old. Right. No, you're not. Nobody said you're old. Yeah, I am. It's just a classic. That movie's old, not you. It's a movie? <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe it was a TV show. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You need to watch it. Okay, and then now... maybe maybe you'll have some some heart for that that flute after you watch it. Is it long? <laughs> What's well, a movie? Oh God, it's not as bad as the Yu-Gi-Oh movie, is it? Because... Oh, I don't know. I've never, I never oh, watched that. I had to watch that when my son was little. Oh my God, I took him to the theater and I thought I was going to die. It was the <laughs> worst. And apologies to any Yu-Gi-Oh fans out there, because I'm sure if we have Comic-Con going listeners, there are some out there. Apologies, yeah. but. I mean, was, the, the cartoon was great. I watched that, but I never saw the movie. That's okay. You know what? I think I should watch The Brave Little Toaster. I and think you, you should. should watch Yu-Gi-Oh! And we'll report back. Okay. Deal. <laughs> Bless your heart. Oh, 
that's gonna be fun. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, let's talk about things that people might care about. <laughs> this stuff. Well, I'm pretty sure they care about the brave little toaster and your I, food and, would... and your plant that is still alive, which I have to point out. Thriving, again. Yeah. thriving, alive and thriving kids. Um, yeah, so that's good. At least I, yeah. I achieved that goal. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank so you. yeah, let's, let's get to the important stuff. Why did you call me? What's up? I'll do just to irritate you. <laughs> um, I didn't call. <laughs> Hi, Sadie. Nice to see you. Bye. I'm done. <laughs> I didn't want to talk to you anyway. Um, I think we should talk about setting goals because, um, as we all know, my life is insane. And I'm hoping this year is the year the tide kind of turns a little bit because I've gotten a lot of really big stuff done and behind me. And now if I don't do what's important to me, which is right, um, I'm going to probably murder someone. And I don't think anybody wants that. Although if I murdered somebody and I went to jail, um, I would have a lot of time to write. You would. And I think we could still do the podcast. I think I just call you for what, the five minutes and just record the phone call. I think that's It'd be allowed. Quick. It'd be quick. Yeah. Well, oh, we could just do the intros and then right. you could interview people. Yeah. This might work. Yeah. So if there, there's hope for you. Oh my God. Change of plans, new goal. <laughs> <laughs> so last we spoke, you were telling me about this big plan you had in mind for how you're going to organize everything. And you kind of gave me a teaser before we started recording and I had to stop you. Okay. Tell us, tell us what, it, what is this thing? Okay. So I'm sort of all kind of connected here to my laptop, so I can't walk you guys down my hall. And it's not like, it's not like I'm going to ever put this up on YouTube because I've been pretty bad at that, but I'm going to try because you need to see this. At the very least, I will put a link to it in the show notes. I discovered a few years ago that the best way for me to break story is to use a big three foot by five foot whiteboard. And when we lived in the, our old house that we sold, I had a dedicated office and I had this, this board and I had all like plot points and all this other stuff, like little magnets and on the board. And it was great. It was like, painting the story. And I'm the kind of, everybody has their own process. And so this might not work for other people, but it works for me. And I would use different colors for different characters and different colors for subplots and that kind of stuff. And then I could see the whole story in one vision, like doing an outline on a Word document doesn't really do anything for me. I know a lot of people use index cards on cork boards. I've done that before. Um, so watch this and okay. gasp. So here's <clears throat> what it looks like right now hanging on the wall. So this is, I'm showing Sadie a three foot by five foot cork board and right down the middle, it separates. But when it's shut, it's a three foot by five foot cork board. And then it opens up. Wow. That's, be, that's awesome. It opens up to be three foot tall still the same, opens up those, like a book, the whole thing opens up. It is now a three foot by 10 foot magnetic whiteboard. That's, yeah. that's a game changer. So your guitars may be all pretty and shit, but <laughs> can you use markers on your guitars? Can you break story on your guitar? I'm going to say yes. Anything's possible. True. But it literally, it's 10 foot of wall. Yeah. That, and this, and this is exactly what I need to get to the next phase of this book. Like I've got all the research done and I found like the main characters that I really want to focus on. And I know a lot of stuff that happens, historical fiction, but I need that, that 
through line that like mm. con- that the tendons that connect these characters and the the what are we rooting for and the not just all these cool things happen you know right um so i i feel like the story is very complex because it takes place in the 1700s mm-hmm. and all during the time of the age of enlightenment american revolution french revolution it's a very crazy time in history and a lot of really amazing real life characters that I want to use um and but what's the story do you know what I mean like I need to just get down and dirty and I'm so excited my my I have a contractor here because we're doing work on the house so I stopped him this morning I'm like could you hang my whiteboard (laughs) he's like yeah he's like took two seconds he's like okay bye (laughs) he wasn't amazed by how cool the thing is and then it opens up like that and then you can close it up and it's like where to go I know and I'm closing it up because I don't have an office like this is my sitting room that you that I record in but there's no it's not like an office like you know like it there's no it's pretty (laughs) and so um my daughter's bedroom that she's married and grown and out, but so I'm using her wall. And the reason I like that it closes to a cork board is then I can like use like thumbtacks and put like tack up like pretty things so that it doesn't look like she's sleeping in my office. (laughs) Right? Yeah. It's pretty cool. I'm very excited for you. Game changer. Game changer. So when, when are you going to start tackling that board and finding finding your story well the board's been up for about five hours <laughs> give me a hop and what have you been doing this whole time <laughs> um oh throw back to another episode yeah remember the episode we had bob signs on yes okay so bob and i after the episode decided that we were going to be each other's accountability partners So this is another tip that might help people find somebody that you're going to say out loud. This is what I want to accomplish this month. And I feel like there's lots of different ways you could do it. You could do Mm -hmm. it like checking in every week, or you could have like a shared Google doc where you document what you're doing so they can see that you haven't done shit. (laughs) you know, and, um, and have you had an accountability partner before? Yeah, I would say like my writing partner Mm -hmm. was one. Um, I think maybe my husband is one more so now. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think in the last couple of weeks, I I've kind of come to this conclusion that I have to like be my own accountability partner because after great advice from both you and and my wonderful husband uh you guys really put in perspective of like you gotta speak up for yourself mm-hmm. nobody else is gonna do it for you and if you don't do anything you only have, only have yourself to blame and I was like well goddamn so I've been you know we're all our worst critic and enemy when it comes to getting anything done so I was like well I'm already going to shame myself if I don't write it, but I'm going to really shame myself if I actually set the goal and don't do it. So now I've been getting up every morning before I go to work, which is my office, and I just start writing. So I sit about like an hour, hour and a half aside first thing in the morning before before 7 a.m. and start cranking out pages. And it's been working so far. And, That's great. And Rob has been a good cheerleader. So I guess yes, yes and no to your, your question. Mm -hmm. I think it's best if you can be your own accountability partner, but I think it's hard for a lot of people to do like, yeah. Cause I tend to say I'm going to work on the writing before I start working on the job Mm -hmm. and it, and it would actually be not so hard for me because, um, Matt's sleeping when I get off because he's in LA. <laughs> so it would, it's pretty quiet. Like it wouldn't be yeah. 
but Kira and Book Pipeline is is on East Coast too. So she's up. So sometimes we'll have conversations in at work in the morning. But um I am going to be a little more realistic. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say that every morning I'm going to do at least 15 minutes. That's right? good. Yeah, that's good. Because if you do at least 15 minutes, it always ends up being a half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, right? But if you're, if I'm tricking myself into <laughs> just sitting down for 15 minutes, um, can you hold please? I'm yeah. Phone, phone call that I have to just get. Look. Okay. Welcome back. Thank you for indulging me. Okay. So we all know that I have a store. So this month, okay. So this goes back to the writing goals. I'm not just mm -hmm. talking about this. Like my, this particular month, I'm setting goals that are a little lighter because my antique shop is closed this month, but that doesn't mean I'm not doing anything. It actually means I'm working harder at the antique shop because people are meeting me by appointment. People want me to schlep through the whole building and find the piece of furniture that they want. People, then I have to, and people are also coming and picking up furniture that they bought. So then I have, the whole store looks like a bomb went off. And I'm also building these shelves. I'm doing this like Ikea shelf hack thing. So <sighs> unbelievable amount of work that I'm also, and then I'm also doing my job. <laughs> so I'm finding that, um, I needed to set easier goals to attain this month. And then once I open the store, I'll actually have more time, which is seems weird, but it's true. It makes sense. Have, yeah. yeah. So 15 minutes in the morning and then um, steal some time whenever I can. Yeah. You know? So this month, I'm just trying to get through a three ring binder that I have with about 80 pages of notes. That's it. <laughs> That's it. And when I thought the story was one thing, when I thought it was about this one guy. So I want to go through all those notes and just highlight. Yeah, this is interesting. Nah, this isn't interesting, you know, or this is where I could integrate a limp de gouge in. This is where I can integrate julia in you know like um because i found a couple of really cool women that i want to kick ass i will not tell you their fate <laughs> okay but it's good that's cool um when when you get up to write and stuff um i'm curious about like how you tackle tackle your day um i have found that what's been working for me which i've switched up is I, I'm woken up by my wonderful husband in the morning and uh, I just, I grab, we make a, co a, a pot of coffee and then I go straight to my office and I don't check email, phone, I don't watch anything, it goes straight into my script and I have it ready on my, my monitor with like my outline and the next scene ready to go and I just like start writing and then I'll start thinking about an hour and like oh I should probably start working or I should check this thing or I can it just kind of it's like a nice fresh way to start before my brain fully turns on what do you do I wish I could do that um I could do that you can do anything um I try to do that and then I find like my mind okay so stop. This is what I'm going to do because I <laughs> wish I could do that. Yeah. I got this planner. I've never been one to write things down in a planner. I've never quite mm -hmm. got it. Like I just use yeah. my Google calendar. I send myself reminders on my phone. I, it, you know, my notes section in my phone is just a big, hot friggin' mess. Like it's just terrible. And with having to juggle my job, running an Airbnb, running a store. <laughs> running your town. Causing trouble in my town, because that's what I'm doing <laughs> right now, causing a lot of trouble. Because um, I'm keeping those town board members accountable. 
that's yeah. a whole other reckless creatives. I am reckless girl. Let me just tell you. Um, but I am very creative and I'm pissing them off. So it's working. <laughs> um, you know, all this other stuff. So I do a lot of volunteer work. Oh, my cemetery. Right. Right. So I figured I need some way to organize everything because things are going to start slipping through the cracks and it's going to be ugly. So what I try to do is I have a little post-it note on my planner. So whenever I think of something that, oh, I got to remember to do that. I've got to make sure I took the sale sign off the website at the store. I've got to make it, you know, I just write it on the post-it note and it's stuck to the planner and I will take care of it when I'm done. I also, yesterday, when I was doing my 15 minutes, I set the timer on my watch for 15 mm -hmm. minutes. And of course, during that 15 minutes, I got interrupted five times. So I pressed the pause button so that I would keep track of, I have not done my 15 minutes yet. And then when I was able to sit back down, I started it again to make sure that even though it took an hour to get my 15 minutes done, <laughs> I still got my 15 minutes done. That's really, that's really smart. Do you use that clock? You have that one that like rotates, right? And it like changes. Yeah. That thing's awesome. I know it's, you know what? Thank you for reminding me. It's also set at the wrong time because <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's not daylight savings time in writer land. <laughs> um, Ooh, I think I just, did I just set it to do something? No, but I don't know if I could pause it. Like, I think it, it just goes. It just I keeps think going. Yeah, you can set it for either five minutes, 15, 30, 45, or 60. And I think, I don't think there's any way to pause. Mm. So make for for me, because it's so easy for me to get interrupted because we're still renovating this house. So I've got the right. contractor and I've got, you know, I think the pause on my watch is probably going to work best until I get to the stage where I can write longer. Yeah, you know, which I hope you do. Yes, I will. But I might use that when it comes to um, working on my whiteboard, which I'm really excited. I'm excited for you. Because I you feel gotta... like... Go ahead. I was going to say, I, I, you got to take photos of like what you're... The first thing you put up there just to like show us what's going on. Break the seal, baby. <laughs> when you open it up, and it's got these two sides, one and a half feet by three feet, mm -hmm. five, two and a half feet by three feet. Those are going to be great. I feel like for like subplots or little things that, okay, this is an idea, but I don't know how to fit that into the main story yet. So maybe if I still leave the three foot by five foot where I structure the story and then I have jotted down little ideas on the sides that I could pull them over and stick them on there. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking my plan might be. This is really cool. I'm excited for you. Oh my God. I'm so in love with this geeky thing. But I'm going to be really excited when, once you start writing the damn thing already. I know. I, well, I have a chapter done. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <laughs> But the bad thing is, is it wasn't cheap. So yeah. it was, I don't know. I want to say like 289 or something, but whiteboards aren't cheap. No, they're not. But I also did find another thing that I will put in the show notes because I thought this, this was the two things I was trying to decide between. So this other one might be really helpful to somebody listening especially if you're on the go, you know, mm -hmm. it's this whiteboard that just sticks to your wall mm -hmm. and, but you can peel it off and roll it back up and stick it somewhere else. Oh. You can reuse it all over the place, restick it wherever you want to restick it. And, but this one was not magnetic. Mm. And I have these little plot point magnet magnets already that I created a few years ago. So I wanted to still be able to use those. And I also felt like um, it would be hard to hide it. I'd have to get like a tapestry or like something to hang over right. it. If I didn't want people to just, if I don't want to just like have my story naked out there. <laughs> I kind of like 
it's like I've when I when I open it up, I'm I can just paint all over the thing and then close it. And it's nobody's beeswax. What's going on in there? Right. Are you gonna put a little lock on it? I'm gonna put when like, there's like a little like mini diary locks where you immediately lose the key. <laughs> or maybe like or if somebody tries to open it, it just pepper sprays them. <gasps> Whoa, you put it like a booby trap in there. Because the only one opening it would be my kids, and I don't want them to get hurt. <laughs> but I also thought, um, I really like that that sticky thing, and yeah, I will put a link to that in the show notes too. I think it was a like a Mark Cuban company. I want to say that was um, involved with that. I don't know what I don't know if it was a Shark Tank thing or not, mm. but um looked really cool and it was cheaper um and big i think it was four foot by eight feet but you could get them smaller it's huge but you could get them smaller and the four foot by eight feet if you have like decent sized ceilings you could even have that be vertical you know yeah and take up that whole section of wall i thought i just and you can cut it oh you know yeah I think, okay. I, yeah. And I know somebody who used it because they, um, they would travel for work and you, they rolled it up and would put it into a little, one of those like poster carriers mm-hmm. and then, and they would take it on the plane, take it wherever. And then they'd pull it out and slap it on the hotel. wall. <laughs> okay. Right. I like that. All right. So what, how is it like, what's the adhesive on it that it's, you're able to just like pry it off your wall and then stick it back up? I over didn't and over ask again. Those questions. I <laughs> I don't know. It's supposed well, hopefully someone doesn't... will buy it and they'll let us know. And it's not supposed to leave any residue or anything like that. It's yeah. supposed to just be. That's it. You just All so right. that might be helpful for somebody out there. Yeah. Yeah, especially someone who's on the go. Yeah. Yeah. Or doesn't want to put like if you're in an apartment and you don't want right. to put holes molly's in the wall like you yeah, yeah. You, you know you can just slap this thing up and it's not going to hurt anything and the landlord's not going to get pissed and you don't have to lose your security deposit <laughs> like there's yeah. a lot of uses for it yeah so what what else is on your list of goals things that you're doing for for genie this year all that I care about is getting this, breaking this story and yeah. starting to write, you know? Um, and I have a lot of other like professional goals, but those are boring. It's like work stuff. Yeah. You know? And I think it's just like, okay, so for setting goals, some practical tips for people out there. Um, the trick is also not beating yourself up when you have a week where you're like, yeah, you do anything. <laughs> do you do things like um, rewarding yourself when you reach a certain goal? The rewards work for you? No. No, not for me either. No. Um... The writing is the reward for me. Yeah, like seeing the page count, like, build up and mm-hmm. I'm like oh wow I just started this and I already wrote th- 30 pages in a week and a half and it's like okay I didn't realize that that's awesome that's the mm-hmm. reward I think yeah um yeah and just like jamming through this outline I'm I'm really happy I did the outline because it's been helping a lot but um yeah I guess the reward it's like seeing the thing actually come to life and doing its thing it's like with my album it's like I I just sat all my masters uh as of yesterday and it's like oh my god this thing is like almost done and it like all the hard work that we put into it's paying off and it's above and beyond so like yeah I mean those are those are the rewards yeah we had a really great symposium last night um with Lee Jessup and lovely and um we also had a big storm here. So I was, they kept saying all day, we're going to lose power, expect to lose power, prepare to lose power. And I'm like, we cannot lose power. I have a symposium. I've got shit to do. (laughs) 
so I went down, I live in the country. So I went down to my store, which is in the village five minutes away. And I thought I was going to go to my mom's to record it because I don't have a generator here yet. And mom mm -hmm. has a generator. So I thought, oh, if, she, if we lose power, mom's generator will kick in and I can keep going. But then I thought I'll go to the store because in the village, there's less trees, less chance of power outage. Mm -hmm. So did at the store, everything was fine. And of course, my mother lost power. <laughs> no. So, so I was glad I didn't do that. Um, but it was such a great session. And somebody asked for advice about how to write, find time to write when you have a full-time job. Yeah. And she basically said a lot of what we're talking about. She's like, find that time. Like if you're a morning person and you can be Sadie Dean and get up and write before you go to work, do that. Some people are night people, you know, and some people write during their lunch hour. The mm -hmm. 15 minute thing also might be really great for somebody to do during the lunch hour. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I did that too for a while and it, and it helped. It works. I mean, yeah. Like, it's a did, you ever, did you ever read Pilar Alessandra's The Coffee Break, Coffee Screen Break Screenwriter? Yeah. But like a million years ago, but that is such a great book. Yeah. And Lee mentioned it last night. So that's why I'm mentioning it today. And then, um, but you know, she was saying that it's like uh professional athletes, Mm -hmm. They they train even off season. They're mm -hmm. running. They're doing some sort of physical activity, and um, and it's the same thing for writers. If you're not writing at all, like if the athlete's not working at all, then their muscles go into atrophy, and it's going to be that much harder for them to get back in shape when the season starts. Mm -hmm. But and same thing with writing. If you're not touching your work all the time, <laughs> you forget the story. Like, let's just talk practically. Like, mm -hmm. let's just pretend you could sit down your laptop and write perfectly, you know, um, which, after not which having... I do. I mean, but go on. Do. Of course you do. You're saying, you no, um, that even if you have no problem with, you know, getting right back into the rhythm, um, you forget the story, like you don't forget yeah. the story, but you forget where you left off, what, right. what happened. You got to start reading it all over again. It's like, you need to do all this work to rev the engines again mm -hmm. and get back in writing shape. And she's like, that's the biggest reason why, even if you don't have an hour a day to write, even if you're just going to go read the scene you wrote the day before, you know, the beginning of your day, because then it keeps you thinking about it all day long and you never forget. Mm -hmm. and you can jump back in. She's like, because if you tend to be the kind of person who's waiting for a three or four hour chunk and then say, oh, I'm not, I don't have any time to do that today, you'll never get anything written. Because if you've got a family and you've got a full-time job and you, three or four hour chunks are a gigantic luxury. Yeah. Unless yeah. your spouse left you, then you might find out. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, I know people who have kids and they get up even earlier before they get them ready for school and the whole thing and go to work. And I'm just like, do you sleep? And they're like, eh, maybe four hours. And like, I don't have any of those things in my life and I, I don't, I can't function on four hours. So yeah. there's su super humans out there that, that get things done. I do think that once you have kids, you do just get used to not sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> and then they move out and then you start sleeping again it's great <laughs> <laughs> except for um, you yeah we we go to bed around midnight but that doesn't mean that i'm not asleep on the couch before bed. <laughs> right yeah yeah i get like, it like last night we had a symposium and lee was amazing it was called um start your screenwriting year with a bang mm -hmm. and it was i learned all these things about the history of the industry and like, oh my God, so much. It's supposed to be a two hour session. And she answered every single question. It was like two hours and 35 minutes. Wow. It was amazing. And um, I'm going to get that up on our Vimeo channel. I can put a link to it too in the notes. So good. And just a lot of really practical advice and also explaining like how the industry works and, and helping people understand like, 
one script just is one good script is not enough. Like you need more, like, Mm -hmm. you know, just all that stuff. And I think it helped. um, And she gave them actionable items. And I think it really helped people feel like, okay, this is my plan. Like Mm -hmm. I'm going to create this plan for whatever it is each person's individual goal is, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, She's so good. Yeah. She's just, there's just so much. It's all in her hair, all the information. In her hair? (laughs) It's all in her hair. But she's had so much uh, just great like wisdom and like nuggets about the industry and just navigating your career as a writer, which I mean, is amazing. I know. I don't know how all that information is in there but she's lover 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 um so okay so let's talk about plan b okay so um say you wake up Mm -hmm. or you just say wonderful husband i'm gonna keep sleeping (laughs) which has happened this week Mm -hmm. yes Mm -hmm. so do you have a plan to keep yourself motivated? Yeah. Uh, it's playing mind tr- tricks on myself, basically. Um, I've been doing this thing where it's like, if I'm thinking about the thing and I'm thinking, man, I should really be doing that thing rather than scrolling endlessly on Instagram, then I'm like, then go do that thing because you're not going to have time to go back to that thing or just do it. Like it's on your mind. Just send that email write that thing, whatever it is. And then I do it. I'm like, oh, well, that was a lot easier than I thought would be. Otherwise, I'd just be dreading it all day. So like if I miss my writing time first thing in the morning, because sometimes I'm like, not today. I'm not getting up this early. You're crazy. Um, I will find that moment in my day when I have, you know, during lunch or whatever, during my work time to like, just write a quick note if I have to, if it's for my scripts or checking, you know, like uh, this week has just been checking the masters and just making sure they sound right. Like, do I have any notes? And like, okay, make a note of that. I'll put that away and I could respond to those emails later. Um, that's kind of what I, I've been doing. Um, but I'm, I've been finding that once nighttime rolls around, I'm just useless. Like my brain's just yeah. mush. Um, but in terms of music, I, I try to pick up my guitar or one mm. of these guitars at least once a day just to practice whatever it is, just running, you know, chord progressions or whatever it is. And just so I don't forget what the thing right. is. And it's the same thing about writing, like what Lee was saying, like you, you practice your instruments, you, you practice mm-hmm. your music, same thing. So everything becomes just muscle memory. Right. Um, I... I'm going to give our listeners a piece of advice that I gave my kids. Um, sometimes it, you, there's so much on your plate and you just get really overwhelmed. Um, so what I have found works best for me is if I write down a list of all these things that are stressing me out, all these, all these things I have to do. And it may be, and it's just, sometimes it's a little terrifying. <laughs> write it all out. But then if you pick the hardest thing, the thing that's stressing you the most, and you do that one first, everything else seems like a piece of cake. Mm -hmm. And it instantly becomes less overwhelming. So do that if you can. If you can. No, that's great advice. Uh, I think everyone should try it at least once and see what happens. This is what happens when you get old. You, you, <laughs> you learn all these. Yeah, you get wise. You learn these little life well, tricks. I have something to look forward to. Yeah, you do. <laughs> and also, too, you start feeling that Marissa Tomei clock ticking. Not that I'm having babies, but I mean, just that <laughs> I can see death around the corner. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you do work at a graveyard, so... <laughs> I know. Okay. Yeah. So like I was at the market today and the guy's like, do you want to use your reward points? I'm like, yeah, I could be dead tomorrow. Give them to me. 
And then my cousins, who I haven't seen in a few years, just surprised me yesterday and showed up in town. And he, they were on their way to visit their parents at the cemetery in another state. So they drive through our state. And he was telling me that, um, see, so some of my jobs actually come in handy and I'll explain. He was telling me that he and his wife had bought plots next to his parents. And the last time he went up there, there was somebody buried in his plot. <laughs> they had like, or there was a tombstone there. So I don't know, you can put a tombstone up before you put a body in. So it doesn't mean somebody was buried, but they're like, well, well he confronted them and he, they're like, well, yeah. you know, this is the only case. We have a little bit of a problem. <laughs> so, right. So he's, Sadie has a very shocked look on her face. And so he, so I told him once they straighten it and figure it out, if there's somebody buried in there, I'm like, you own that piece of land. You own that piece right. of real estate. Like it's your land. Like, you know, but who wants to ask somebody to dig up their loved one? Nobody wants to do that. So um, he's like, well, if they give us other plots, like, I just want to make sure this doesn't happen again. And I'm like, okay, so you, now I know the answer to this question. Anyone right. who has a plot out there, you go to the monument company and you get cornerstones put in on the corners of your property that has your the initial of your last name on it. And then that's never going to happen again because they know, oh, somebody has this plot. So everyone, if you buy a plot, get cornerstones. This is your free okay. cemetery advice for the day. Yeah. So that was plan C. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're just looking ahead into the future. I love this. I know. Just just get your shit organized, people. <laughs> Cradle to so, grave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Help us. All right. These are all great plans and ideas. And uh, I'd be curious for those that listen and follow us on social media to like share their, their like plans or like how they tackle writing every day if they do or like what it is that gets them going. Because so you never know, it might inspire someone else or influence someone's way and how they attack their day. Or if you know, have any like cool resources that you use, like yeah. software or like my big whiteboard, like yeah. stuff like that. Um, share that with us on social. Um, and then all of our social links are in the show notes. Um, oh, software. Yes. Maybe let's have a little chat about that. All do right, you, let's do it. Okay, so what do you use in terms of writing and also any programs you might use for organizing? Okay, good question. Uh, for like outlining and stuff, because Anything. for some reason, yeah, for uh, for some reason, I don't know why I'm I've been having this issue for years and I just haven't looked into why but I can't seem to like get my license number for my uh Microsoft Word which I bought years ago but it just won't work so anyways I've been using Google Docs which mm. is is good for now but I don't trust it entirely but that's kind of where everything lives so I have all my outline stuff there all my character breakdowns and stuff in there as a live document um which is great too because I could always check on it on my phone and stuff so that's really nice um and then in terms of actual writing the screenplay it's final draft um I'm still on final draft 12 I think I think I just upgraded to 12 like within the last year um and I certainly don't use all the bells and whistles that it has in there but um it's really straightforward it just gets the job done and I copy and paste my outline into mm -hmm. the working draft. I already have all the scenes broken down and everything. So it's just really easy to start writing. Um, and then also I just recently, I was um, applying for a mentorship program and they were asking for a, a pilot and I lost the original file for this pilot that I wrote a million years mm -hmm. ago. 
So I had the PDF version and I was like, I got to fix this because it's like outdated and I just, I just need to punch it up a little bit. So I was able to like copy and paste it straight into final draft and all the formatting was pretty much there. I had to fix a couple of things, but that was great. So that's kind of like my go-to. Yeah. I used to use, uh, what was it? Movie magic Mm -hmm. a million years ago. And I loved it, but they never updated it and never worked with my newer computer. So yeah, that's what I use. I know a lot of people use other programs and I'd be curious to hear what what you've been using. I, I, I was a big movie magic user in the screen, Mm -hmm. my screen editing days, um, because I was wrote with somebody and I liked, I, I liked the, um, that you could open up that the notes were always open and mm-hmm. you could color code the notes. So like my notes would be one color and his notes would be another color. And so like, it's, I think I kind of equate the difference of the notes between final draft and movie magic is like final draft are the ones, the people who like to put their stuff like in folders and put them away. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I'm the kind of person, hence the big whiteboard. I like to see it all. So yeah. that's, the thing why I never really fell in love with final draft. It's just the notes thing. I didn't, and they may have changed that. So you could have an option of leaving them open. I don't know. Yeah, um, you can, you can. Yeah, and they have but, a lot more stuff like the index cards and stuff that you could open yeah, up, which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. They have a lot of really cool features now that um, when I was heavier into screen editing, they didn't have. And, um, but um. I probably can't even open my own script, my old scripts because they're in movie magic. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I don't think I'm, I'm pretty sure you can open it in a final draft. Oh, I think. yeah. It's been a while since I've done any like customer service stuff for them because they used to work there, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah. I'm not really, I don't care. Yeah. Um, I'm over that world. <laughs> this, so I'm working on a novel. So, mm-hmm. There's this program that I got that actually, um, I don't think I have his book up here. Um, I, I've rec- I was showing one of my other friends who's a professional screenwriter this program and he loved it and he uses it all the time for outlining. It's called Plotter, P L O T T R, yeah. And it's it's like you've got your whiteboard on your computer and you can create. They have like templates, like the hero's journey, stuff like that, but you can create your own template of your own structure. And then you take the little tiles and you can move them all around. And it's like a virtual whiteboard. It's really cool. Um, So I started playing around with that. I really like it. And what I like about it is you can export it into Word, or you can also export it into Scrivener. Oh, which Scrivener is a lot of screenwriters use it too, not just novelists. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a really cool, I wouldn't write a screenplay on Scrivener. I would yeah. use Scrivener more for like writing a novel or holding all of your research and character stuff. Cause there's also a cork board feature in Scrivener and you know, whatnot. And especially if you think your script might be something that you want to adapt into a novel someday. Mm. Um, but Scrivener like final draft has like a million bells and whistles. And I think probably even more so than final draft. So it, it can, Scrivener can be intimidating because it's just, it's just so big. It's just big that just, I would just recommend watching a few videos on how other people use it. Um, that just keep it simple. Yeah. Um, there's somebody who, an author who uses Scrivener and she did a, like a, uh, you know, how she uses Scrivener tutorial kind of thing. And I hadn't used Scrivener in a really long time. And so I um, watched it and mm-hmm. it's Abby, think, Abby, somebody, I'll find yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I think and I stick it in the notes. Yeah. She's really fun. Really nice. And um, so in other software, oh, this thing that I love. It's called SYNMAP, S-Y-N-M-A-T. Mm-hmm. And when you open it up, hold on. I'm going to see if I can screen share. I'm going to have to put this one on YouTube because I think it's just really important. Yeah. Let me um, share screen. 
share your screen. Yeah, I can't do things. I think it's just my brain of like that has too many things because then I will get distracted and not actually do like do the thing. That's why okay. I like the simple like Word doc outline and then just the simple <laughs> final draft template and I'll just just go. Well, of this course. is really cool. Right? So, okay, of course it's um, uh, halting. <laughs> It's, I'm trying to put in run and it's not doing it. Okay, let me let me quit it and open it again. Um, so like a thesaurus type thing or? Yes. Okay. I was gonna say the other thing I use is thesaurus.com and then I have a bunch of like different books I use for so, pulling words and stuff. But this will also show you the swear words. Um, so like if you're like, I put in run and like mm -hmm. one of the words that came up was trip. So like if you click mm -hmm. on trip, it'll, it gives you like the definition of trip. You can, my, I don't know why my program's not working right now, but it's just a really great thesaurus and, um, and it's just fun. So it's not really working. Can you see it? No, you stop sharing. Oh, well, that's not helpful. <laughs> okay. Let me edit all of this out <laughs> technical difficulties okay there you go so like like and then you can click on slip and then it gives you like all the definitions over here uh -huh. oh. like and so it helps you find those words like this tap like journey like it, it just when you feel like you've been using the same words over and over again, yeah. you want to find some little, when you're down to the wordsmithing part, mm -hmm. it's, it's a cool, it's a cool program. I love it. That's awesome. Is it free or you have to pay for it? Uh, you have to pay for it. Yeah. Subscription or just one time? I think I'm a big fan of one time payments. Yes. Yes. I don't care if I have to pay more for the one time payment. Like with Plotter, I did the one time payment. And I can yeah. use it, I could use Plotter on my Mac um, and on my um, iPad. Mm -hmm. And I think I can use it on my phone. Oh. So like, and it all syncs with each other. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I just use the Notes app for anything on my phone. I have a whole bunch of stuff on the Notes app. And I do think you can export your notes. Yeah, you can. But I have all these things in my notes app that it's like, oh yeah, well they might as well be in the freaking ether somewhere because <laughs> I don't. It's a mess. Yeah, I get it. Here's one of my I... favorite go tos because it's just on my desk that I've been using. The Describer's Dictionary. Before I need that. Yeah, I picked this up at the writer store a million years ago, and I love it. And I have a bunch of other fun little tool writing tool books and then well, I have give like me a, a book. list of the give me a list I of will. The books yeah I also have a book I, I may have mentioned it before it's a book of jargon but it was made in like it was written maybe in like the 70s or 80s so oh, it's yeah. very cool about like just seeing what that lingo was then um I'm so fascinated by that kind of stuff so if you're ever doing like historical stuff always pick up the older books see what's going oh. on in there oh and I have another book. I'm going to take my, I'm going to go get it. Pause, okay. pause, pause. For all those people who do historical stuff, theory pieces, mm -hmm. whatever, pull up. This is the show and tell episode of Reckless Creatives. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So there's a whole series of these books. They're the daily life books so like this Ooh. one is daily life in 18th century italy and it tells you stuff like the kind of food they ate and the clothes they wore and all that kind of stuff so like if you're doing anything that's period they've got them for different countries and different time periods and um the daily life i need that yes right yes i'm writing it down right now we're gonna have a gigundo show notes. Yes. 
And then another favorite, and I'll I'll give you um all those too. It's like the emotional thesaurus. Mm, I think I have that. Yeah, it's like they do one on like um psychological stuff and like anger and all kinds of stuff. Um, I think they do one on like places and stuff. I don't know. Um, but it's it's great. It's a great tool. Okay, so there's this other one that I, the source that I have that's for writing erotica. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it. You heard me say it. Um, and it's, you know, because you get tired of figuring out names for all those things <laughs> over and over and over again. I'll put that in it. And, it's, and it also has some funky name to title to it. Um, I'm going to try to just Google it and look it up. please i probably it easier if i just try to find it on the show it's got some weird i can only imagine what you're typing into your google like erotic books yes erotic. yes this is what it's called this is this is why i had to look it up are you ready for this yeah the bald-headed hermit and the artichoke an erotic thesaurus <laughs> not kidding that's what it's called that's that's great. It's a stupid. It. See, so I'm sharing this with you because who would have thunk? Right. Right? Yeah. I mean, the other thing with the writing is that you have to rewrite. And when you go back, you got to punch all this stuff mm -hmm. up, right? Like, you got to have those those tools. So, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Makes, yeah. This is a great. See, this is what's so exciting about writing is like all the different ways you could tackle it. Yeah. The key also, is you gotta tackle it. <laughs> the key is you have to sit your ass down and just do it. Yeah. That's our number one tip. Sit down, <laughs> do it. Or use a standing desk, whatever. Stand, lay down, whatever. But Don't I drive. Think, Don't drive and write. I think that's dangerous. Could you dictate while you're driving? Yeah, I think so. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I guess you could do that too. I heard a commercial in the car while I was driving this morning. Eyes in the front. <laughs> Eyes to the front. So maybe just think about your story while you're driving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe don't do that. Um, so yeah, I think we gave you guys enough tools to get you started and get us started. And um, do you have a, a uh, an actual goal besides that you're working towards with the morning stuff? Like, or do you just, or is your goal just kind of like just making it a priority again and getting in there? Yeah, making it a priority again, uh, but finishing this, this script, mm -hmm. uh, I've been working on it for a very long time. And this is one that I'd, I'd like to actually make. So I'm just doing everything I can right now while I can to just make that the priority and learn as much as I can and just make the thing. Um, so is your, is your goal like, uh, uh, to direct a feature now that you've got yeah. some shorts under your belt? Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously I, I should be making more shorts just to keep that going and working on that craft, but this is like the big, big goal, um, that I, I want to tackle. Um, but yeah, the, the short stuff, I, I have some ideas from other ones that I want to do. The one I finished, gosh, almost two years ago is premiering at a festival next month. And we've been nominated for four awards, which is crazy to think of. And Sweet. so, yeah, just kind of going off of that and all the like positivity from that and just using that to go into the next thing and see what I can do. Um, that's awesome. But yeah, the feature, that's the, that's the next thing I really want to focus on. Because, you know, the thing that I find so annoying about writing <laughs> I love writing don't get me wrong but it's like okay you did this and then it's like okay well what else you got what are you gonna right. do next what are you gonna do next? and it's right. if it's been like a year it'd be like well what 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 have you done well what, what and it's it's this constant and even when you look at it with these people in who've had success and you know oh well they haven't made a movie since 
1995. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's like, but does it count that the movie they made was so freaking awesome? <laughs> right. Yeah. But all, and also like, it takes a this lot of pressure. time to make anything. I mean, mm-hmm. some folks, it takes 10 years for that script to even get a yes. And then another two, three years to get it made. And then you got to figure out distribution and who knows how long that's going to take. And mm-hmm. It's not easy. No, no, especially in the, yeah, especially in the screenwriting space. I mean, like in the novel world, self-publishing is a lot easier than going out and making a movie. Yeah. You just upload stuff to Amazon, fill out some stuff, click button, and there you go. I don't mean to say it's just, it is. Right. It's a lot of work. (laughs) It's a lot. And there's a lot more to it than you realize. Um, Karen Richardson, a friend of mine, did a self-publishing symposium for us, and she went deep dive into it. And it's a really great tutorial on how to do it. And but you realize it like you're basically a publishing company; you're doing everything right. yourself. But a lot of publishers now, like you, they don't even help you with marketing. They don't give you any of that stuff. You've got to do it all yourself know. anyway. So, <laughs> yes, and then why? Right. I mean, so it's a lot of people want to be traditional published. I would probably try to be traditionally published um, just because why not? Um, But then there's also that pressure. You get an agent and then it's like, okay, like, and the same thing with screenwriting managers, like, okay, we've got this one that we're trying to shop, but what are you working on now? Because it, you know, because everybody makes money off of what you sell. So you can't just be a one hit wonder. Like you've got to have multiple things going on. And some people can juggle projects all at the same time, like multiple projects at the same time. And some people just focus on, I'm going to just write this and finish it. And then I'm going to focus on the next one and finish it. And yeah, I think it's just a personal thing, you know, it's whatever works as long as you get it done. Right. And that I think is the key. And the bottom line of this is that it's whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that how, oh, but so-and-so does it like this. I should try doing it like that. You can certainly try when somebody says, oh, my process is this, and this is how it's worked for me. It took me years to figure out that a whiteboard was what I needed, (laughs) you know? And once I figured it out, oh my God, it was like, it was incredible. Um, It was so liberating and freeing and you'll, you'll know it when you find the thing. So try writing in the morning, try writing at night. I'm too tired at night. I can't do it at night, but try the lunch break, try um, using some sort of software to break your story, try using just a a notepad, Mm -hmm. you know, where you just story map, like circles of characters and how they intersect and plot points or whatever. I mean, try anything and then you'll, it'll be a glorious (laughs) moment (laughs) when all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, this is the thing I've been missing. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it's, why it's, writers like to read so much about what is your process. Yeah. Because they keep thinking there's going to be some magic thing. Right. And sometimes there is. I mean, mm-hmm. you just take, you know, it's like feedback, right? You take the stuff that works for you and see if it sticks and works. Yep. And if it doesn't, go cry in a corner. But don't blame us. Right. Please don't. Yeah, this is all good stuff. I'm excited for this year and you putting Jeannie first and saying no to people trying to get you to do more stuff so that you can focus on your writing. I said no today. Just want everyone to know that somebody wanted me to come to the store so they could pick up their stuff. And I said, no. This does not work for me. I will, you can pick it up tomorrow. Uh, As we wrap this up, I do want to bring up, what was it last week? I can't remember. We were playing that Merriam-Webster dictionary gift game. Oh my God. uh, It was very spot on for both of us, for you several times. I can't so, what the words were. 
Well, I remember the last one was like Queen, but it it took a couple of tries to get there. Okay, I have to scroll back through our text messages so I can find these screenshots. Hold, please. Oh, was it before we were raging? <laughs> Scrolling back through text messages with Sadie is hysterical. I see caramel corn. It was after that. It was definitely after that. That was during after. the holidays. Oh my god. There's the big whiteboard. Look at that. There's some Michael Scott gifts. Oh, here. So there's this, if you go to the Merriam Webster Twitter account, X mm -hmm. account, whatever. There's this thing that they have where it's like words rotating and you're supposed to just take a screenshot of it. And that's supposed to be like your word. For so the say for the, the whole year. Yeah. It's like, this is you for the year or whatever. I, I think that's what, I don't know. I don't remember anymore. I was so just like over so, it. So Sadie does a screenshot and the word comes up as overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> and then mine was dereliction. <laughs> and then I did it again. The next time was cursed. <laughs> And then the third time was queenly. So I stopped because I thought I'm going to just stick on, stick with that one. Yeah. <laughs> so go find that because it's really fun. It's, it's a lot of fun. And yeah, very humbling. <laughs> you know what? So is being an artist. It's very yeah. humbling. <laughs> yeah. And overwhelming. And overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. But we're not going to be overwhelmed this year because we have a plan and we have a lot of do... plans, a lot of tools. Yep. And you're going to do the thing that scares you the most first and then tell us about it. Yes. Yes. Or don't. You could keep it to yourself and just say you did it. And then we can applaud you from afar. You can hide it in that folding whiteboard and say, none of your beeswax, bitches. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year.